Anders Chidinius Swedish, squared in DK de NS, the 26th of February 1729 to the 1st of February 1803, was a Finnish priest and a member of the Swedish Riksdag, and is known as the leading classical liberal of Nordic history. Born in Sotkamo, Finland, then part of Sweden, and having studied under Per Kalm at the Royal Academy of Abo, Chidinius became a priest and Enlightenment philosopher. He was elected as an ecclesiastic member of the Swedish Riksdag of the Estates in 1765–66, in which his cap party seized the majority and government and championed Sweden's first Freedom of the Press Act, the most liberal in the world along with those of Great Britain and the seven United Provinces. Vehemently opposed to the extreme interventionist policies of mercantilism preached by the previously predominant Hat Party since decades, he was ultimately coerced into retirement for his criticism of the CAP administration's radical deregulation policies and their social and political consequences. Following Gustav III's coup d'état in 1772, which meant the end of parliamentary rule for another century, Chidinius briefly returned to prominence and worked to increase civil liberties and economic freedom as part of Gustav's doctrine of enlightened despotism, and contributed the abolishment of torture as means of interrogation, the limitation of capital punishment, and the legalization of Jewish and Catholic immigration into Sweden. Ultimately, the king's increasingly autocratic position brought Chidinius out of favour again, and he retired to private life in Ostrobothnia, where he died at age 73. An early pioneer—also by international standards—and proponent of economic liberalism, freedom of religion, freedom of speech and migration writing a pamphlet on the invisible hand a decade before the publication of The Wealth of Nations he was one of the first comprehensive philosophers of liberalism. Biography Early life Anders Chidinius was born in 1729 in Sotkamo, Ostrobothnia where his father Jacob was a chaplain. The family moved to Kuisamo in 1734 where his father became a parish rector. Anders' childhood was spent in the barren area of northern Finland. He and his brother Samuel were taught privately by their father and then they went to Aulu Grammar School After the Russo-Swedish War 1741 the boys studied privately in Tornio and entered the Royal Academy of Abo in 1745. They also studied at Uppsala University. Anders studied mathematics, natural sciences, Latin and philosophy. In 1746 the father Jacob and family moved to Kakola. <inaudible> Nettervidal In 1753, after graduation, Anders was appointed preacher of the chapel of the dependent parish of Nettervidal today, part of Kronaby in Ostrobothnia. He was married in 1755 to Beata Magdalena Melberg, daughter of a merchant from Jakobstad. The couple was childless. While in Nettervidal he was active in many projects such as the clearing of the marshes, experimenting with new breeds of animals and plants, and adopting new methods of cultivation of potatoes and tobacco. His aim was to enlighten the peasants by example. Chidinius practiced medicine and became known by inoculating ordinary people against smallpox. He also performed cataract operations and prepared medicines. The 1765–1766 Riksdag of the Estates Some of his first writings were about practical matters such as the moss overgrowing the meadows, and improvements in the design of horse carriages. Then he moved on to social questions and became known as a writer and speaker. He was sent to the Diet in 1765 to obtain free trading rights for the towns of Ostrobothnia. The cities of Gamlakarlby, Vesa Finnish, Vasa, Bjorneborg Finnish, Pori and Uliborg received navigational rights which helped with their later development as well as helping all of Ostrobothnia. At that time, the tar which should have brought prosperity to his town and the coast had to be sold abroad through Stockholm, which made most of the profits. Largely due to Chidenius' efforts, Stockholm's monopoly was broken and from 1765, the towns gained freedom to sell and ship tar directly to foreign customers. 
Chidinius participated actively in the Diet, and published several articles of criticism which caused a great stir. One of the results of his activities in the Diet was a stricter parliamentary control of the government budget. He considered that one of his greatest achievements was an extension of the freedom of the press. His radical activities caused him to be excluded from the Diet by his own political party in 1766. Topic. Kakola In 1770 he was appointed rector of Gamlakarlbi where he concentrated on parish work. He maintained his own orchestra, and rehearsed with them. They gave concerts in the rectory's reception hall. His father lived in the parsonage at Gamlakarlbi from 1746 to 1766, and Anders lived there from 1770 to 1803. Between 1778 and 1779 Anders Chidinius once again participated in the Diet, at which the position of hired hands was brought up. He championed the rights of the servant class. At the suggestion of King Gustavus III, he introduced a bill whereby foreigners were also granted limited rights to practice their own religion. He participated in the Diet again in 1793 and was active as a writer covering the development of agriculture, the burning of saltpeter, smallpox, and the settlement of Lapland. One of his main tasks during his latter years was the supervision of building an extension to the old parish church. He died in 1803. Ideas <inaudible> 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 Free trade In 1765 Chidinius published a pamphlet called The National Gain Den National Winston, in which he proposes ideas of free trade and industry, explores the relationship between economy and society, and lays out the principles for liberalism, capitalism, and modern democracy. In the book Chidinius published theories closely corresponding to Adam Smith's Invisible Hand, eleven years before Smith published his book, The Wealth of Nations. Chidinius also put his theories into practice by proposing to the Riksdag of the Estates a drastic trade liberalization of towns along the Gulf of Bothnia. However, most of his other propositions were not realized, such as turning Lapland to a night watchman state to make the poor province prosper economically. Free state, private ownership and individual freedom. Inhabitants could choose whatever profession, freedom of trade would be complete, there would be no privileges, regulation or taxes. Bureaucracy would be non-existent, and the only officer would be a judge who would oversee that no one's rights would be suppressed. <laughs> freedom of expression Chidinius became a great proponent of freedom of the press. In a report published in 1776, he wrote, No evidence should be needed that a certain freedom of writing and printing is one of the strongest bulwarks of a free organization of the state, as without it, the estates would not have sufficient information for the drafting of good laws, and those dispensing justice would not be monitored, nor would the subjects know the requirements of the law, the limits of the rights of government, and their own responsibilities. Education and good conduct would be crushed, coarseness in thought, speech, and manners would prevail, and dimness would darken the entire sky of our freedom in a few years. <laughs> Natural equality Chidinius was outspoken about universal rights and the abolition of privilege. He wanted to give the poor the same freedom as for everybody else and argued for the good of the poor, which was then rather exceptional among politicians. He promoted democracy and defended the freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of trade and industry, and the workers' rights. He called for an oversight of the way the state funds were spent. In modern language we would say he advocated openness and good governance. In a 1778 essay, Thoughts Upon the Natural Rights of Servants and Peasants, he wrote, Nature shapes them exactly like us. Their posture in the crib is the same as ours, their souls have the same reason as other people's, whereby it is plain to see that the Lord of creation also had intended them to have equal rights with other people. <laughs> <laughs> Legacy Chidinius can be seen as a major influence on Nordic thinkers as well as real-life politics, strictly promoting classical liberalism. 
He has been labeled the father of Swedish liberalism. Both Sweden and Finland include him among their historical notables, and he is variably categorized either Swedish or Finnish by nationality. Anders Chidinius is remembered as a man ahead of his time, expressing ideas that were radical in his day, but are now the backbone of the Nordic ideology. He can also be seen as an Enlightenment thinker, an advocate of science, arts, rational thinking and freedom. He was also a scientist and skilled eye surgeon, the maker of several inventions, a pioneer of vaccination in Finland and the founder of an orchestra. Chidinius was featured on the highest valued bank note 1000 marks of the Finnish Marks last design series Anders Chidinius was selected as the main motif in a recent Finnish commemorative coin the 10 euros Anders Chidinius commemorative coin minted in 2003 The obverse features an open book referring to Chidinius's numerous publications and the Bible On the reverse a traditional village with a church and other buildings can be seen in the book Historians 100 Viktigaste Svenskar, 100 Most Important Swedes in History, written by Nicholas Ektel and Petter Carlson, Chidinius was ranked as the 17th most important Swede in history. In Finland, Chidinius was ranked on the place number 40 in the list of greatest Finns in a voting contest organized by the National Broadcasting Company. Topic. Selected works American Skanafverbatar. Abo 1753. American Bark Boats. Svar pa sama fraga om basta sate at a podla maslupna anger. Stockholm 1762. How to cultivate mossy meadows. Svar pa sama fraga. Angan carers forbattering. Stockholm 1764. The improvement of wagons. Wetterlagning af de skal, warmed man soaker bestrida oster ok wasterbotishka samt waster norlinski staden frysaglation. Stockholm 1765. Counter arguments to those who would attempt to oppose free navigation between the towns of Ostrobothnia, Vasterbotten and Norland. Swar pa den afkgl. Wetenskaps Akademien Forestal de Fragen, HWAD Kon Wara Orsaken, at Saden Mikenhet Svenskat Folk Arlegen Flyter Utor Lande? Stockholm 1765. For what reason do so many Swedes emigrate every year? Kalin Till Ricketts 1 MAGT. Stockholm 1765. The source of the weakness of the kingdom. Den National Winston. Word Samist of Warlm Nad Till Rixens Hoglofliga Stander, AFN Dearest Letamot. Stockholm 1765. The National Gain Omstandelite Swar, Pa den Genum Tricket Utkun Wetterlagning AF Skriften, Kalid, Kalin Till Ricketts Wanmacht, Jam T. Anmarkningar of Wurda Wid Sama Kala Anstal the Watu Professor. Stockholm 1765. In reply to critiques applying to the source of the weakness of the kingdom, Baratels om Chinesishka skrift Freiheden, Ofersit af Danskan. Stockholm 1766. A report on the freedom of the press in China. Ricketts Jelp, Genom and Nodderleg Finance System. Stockholm 1766. Assisting the kingdom through a natural monetary system. Tall Hallet vid var Allernadigste Konungs, Konung Gustav III, S. Hoga Kroning, den 29 Maji 1772. Stockholm 1772. Speech on the occasion of the coronation of Gustavus III. Svar pa vetenskaps och vidderhäs samhållets i Gothaborg forestalta fraga, haruvida landhandel för ett reich i gemen r nittig eller skattelig, och hvad man den bidrager till industriens upplifvand eller aftigand? Stockholm 1777. Is rural trade advantageous or disadvantageous to the kingdom, and to what extent does it affect the progress or decline in means of livelihood? Tanker om husbanders och tjänstehians nodderliga rat. Stockholm 1778. Thoughts upon the natural rights of servants and peasants. Memorial, Angand Religions Freihat. Stockholm 1779. Memorandum on the freedom of religious faith. Predikningar aver tio guds bud. Uppsala 1781 to 82 Sermons on the 10 commandments Predikningar aver Andra Hubudsticket i Catechizen Homiletiska Forsak Volume 6 Saint 2 Stockholm 1784 Sermons on the second main part of the catechism Om Salt Peter Sudarierna Sarlids i Osterbotten 
Scrifter AF Salskapet for Allman Medborgerlige Kunskaper 2. Stockholm 1795. Preparation of saltpeter. Tanker om Kapimpeningen for Finland's Almoge. K. Finska Hushallings Salskapets Handlinger 1. Abo 1803. Thoughts on inoculating against smallpox for the Finnish people. Topic. See also Contributions to liberal theory History of economic thought